Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And today we're doing another buyer's guide. We're talking jig fishing. From winter finesse jigs to spring, summer, and fall, we're going to talk about six styles of jig, three styles of trailers, and a little bit of gear that will help make you a better jig fisherman overnight by simplifying your technique and your colors to catch more bass. The purpose of these buyer's guides is to help you as an angler narrow down your search. It is so easy in bass fishing to spend hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars and never have any more confidence than when you started. So what we're doing is narrowing down that search, giving you some recommendations that we have a ton of confidence in so that when you go out and fish, you know that yes, these are the right baits. I am doing the right thing. I will interact with the right fish if I just keep going. They're also for your loved ones. Going into the holidays, it's very tough to shop for a bass fisherman. We try to make these as simple as possible with the links down in the video description that go straight to Tackle Warehouse so that you can share it with your loved ones and it's easier for them to get you the things that you would like during the holidays. So we have been cramming these videos in, trying to get them all done with enough time for the holidays. Let's jump into jigs. Starting off, I wanna start off with right now, our current season, and we'll work our way around the year from then. The finesse jig, specifically a finesse football jig, is going to be the most consistent during the winter months. So it's got a small finesse hook in it, that's very important, and then again, that wide football head. It works in a variety of conditions. You can throw that thing virtually anywhere, because in the cold months, the grass has died back in most parts of the country. So that football jig can come through rock, it can come through wood, it'll come through mud, it'll pull along a hard bottom if you're just dragging. It's good for all sorts of different things. And with that finesse hook, you can drop down to lighter line, lighter tackle. You'll get more bites in cold water. And because it's that finesse hook, even on the light line, you get a better hookup. When you hit those fish, it's easier to stick them with that light hook. And a giant bass, even a giant in cold water, doesn't pull that hard. So this whole system works flawlessly. Now, a finesse football, we typically pair it up with some sort of a double tail grub. They come in four inch and five inch from most brands. I recommend the five inch. If you're going to keep it simple, the five is more consistent. The double tail grub just has these two tails and when you pull them through the water they kick, they move back behind the bait. It's not a lot of movement, it's not this big aggressive motion but a lot of times this time of year when we're throwing these jigs we like to just drag them along the bottom. Not much action at all and as you're dragging across bottom, those little double tail claws hanging back there will just barely tick as they go across rocks or uneven bottom. And it's just enough motion that as a bass is sitting there staring at that bait, they decide to commit and eat it. It's not too much motion and it's not completely dead just laying there lifeless on the bottom as you drag it along. It's a perfect balance. The next one, and one that we often overlook, is this little guy. We call these collectively hula grubs. It's essentially a double tail grub with a little plastic skirt on the top. It's not actually a jig at all, but it's incredibly effective in the winter months, so I didn't want to glance over it. We'll typically fish this on either a bare lead ball head or a bare lead football head. And again, down in the video description with all of these, I'm gonna link you the exact bait, it'll go straight to the bait, the exact trailer, and give you two or three of our favorite colors for that jig or that style of fishing. So this, you put a bare head on it. What you end up with is the exact same profile as a football jig, but it's a little bit more finesse appearance 
and it has no weed guard. I like to fish it with just a bare lead head. This is that true finesse fishing approach to jig fishing. You could throw it on six or eight pound line. You can adjust the weight of the head to fish it in shallow water or deep water, and it will get bit all the way through winter. Now, as we transition to spring, this guy really starts to take over for me. This is a ball head jig, just called a finesse jig. Slightly heavier hook, still very, very light wire, but slightly heavier. I typically pair it up again with that five inch double tail grub. Now this style of jig, there are a couple of things you'll notice. One, it has this cut skirt. It's just a different appearance, a little bit larger package when it's in the water. With that ball head, it will come through all the same things that a football would, but it will also, as that grass begins to emerge in spring, starts popping up, it will come through that pretty well too. So it becomes a very universal, a light enough hook that you can still set it on light line. It'll work on 10 or 12 pound line. But in the springtime, these bass start getting stronger. They start getting aggressive as that water warms up, their metabolism rises, they get a lot stronger. That slightly heavier hook will carry you all the way through spring. This is a great option when you just want to try and catch a bigger bass. Say you're fishing docks in the springtime, fish are moving up into the shallows, they're getting on dock pilings, starting to move towards spawning, and you can catch them on a worm. You could drop shot them or catch them on a shaky head. Well, if you want to increase your odds of a bigger bite, that finesse jig is a great way to go. Next up, my all time favorite jig is a pitching jig. This is an arky style head. So see that rounded head? It's not as wide as a football, but it's curved both directions. It comes through everything well. It's not perfect in grass. It's not perfect in rock, but it does everything well. This is the most universal jig that I have in my box. In a half ounce size, you truly could throw this one jig all year round and just have that be the only jig that you owned. It would work. Now it's a much heavier hook, so you would have to fish with heavier line in the winter, which is not ideal, but it will work. So if you're really on a budget and you just need one jig to go out there and fish with, it's a pitching jig every time, and I would do it in a half ounce. That's the most universal. Of course, you could go down or up in size for different conditions, but if you have that in just a couple colors, you're set. This is hands down my favorite summertime, spring, summer, fall. As you're passing through those seasons, that's the jig that I have on deck every single day because it's a stout enough hook that when I stick a giant fish up against heavy cover, I know that I can really lean on that fish and pull them out. But it's light enough that I can still get away with throwing it on 15 or 17 pound line. It's a perfect balance. Now you could throw this with a double tail grub, but more often I pair it with a beaver style bait. This is a beaver. You split the tails so that it has a little bit of action. And then I also, take the first few ribs off the top of the bait. So it ends up looking like this. There's the bait, and this is how much I cut off the top, okay? As I put that on the jig, it becomes a much more compact, natural profile. Fix that skirt here. That is what you're left with. Just a perfect size fish catching jig. This is where my confidence lies most of the year. I love this. Now, one thing I'm going to add, because down again in that description, I'll link just one or two or three colors that we really recommend. But for this jig, I'm going to throw in a bonus color. Hopefully this will show up in the video. This skirt, and again, I'll, I'll, I'll link it for you, but can you see the blue in that skirt? 
Hopefully you can. It has this blue haze to it. This is not a color that I used very often up until last spring. Last spring, I just got hooked on it. I paired this with a beaver, but in Magic Cross Swirl, which is like a green pumpkin with the exact same blue tone in it. There was something magical about it anywhere that bass were eating bluegill. If they were targeting bluegill, that little bit of blue shimmer just seemed to do those fish in. They just could not resist it. Absolutely committed to that bait. So for you guys, obviously it's not spring yet. It's the middle of winter, but we're headed to spring. And for you guys that like fishing that shallow jig, that made a huge difference for me last year. And I didn't want to forget to share that in case we get to spring and I forget it in a video there. That color paired with that magic cross swirl is unbelievable. Two more jigs. And then we'll talk a little bit of gear and we're done. It's really that simple. A no jack flipping jig. A flipping jig, what makes a good flipping jig? It's the pointed head. So a pitching jig is sort of a rounded head. A football jig is that big oval shape. A good flipping jig is pointed so that when you're in grass or heavy cover, you know, tulies, bulrushes, that sort of thing, if you've got a couple of weeds or a couple tulies and that jig falls down in there, when it comes through, it wants to split them apart and let it through. So it naturally opens up that cover and lets the jig through. That's why that style works so well. This no jack flipping jig has a giant hook in it. I don't know how well it'll show without a comparison. Let me take the double tail back off this finesse football. Here's a comparison between these two hooks. It's crazy how different they are. The one is probably five times thicker than the other. This is that true heavy cover jig. I'm either going to pair it up with a beaver for that dead action or something with a lot of movement. That's what I like when we're punching heavy cover one or the other on a given day. So I try both. So either that same beaver style bait or something like a rage craw. Something with a lot of really, really aggressive kick and movement. Let me rig this up. This rage craw, if you're not familiar with it, will just kick like crazy on its way to the bottom and on its way back up. And when you're punching, heavy cover where you're breaking through that overhead cover most of the bites come while that bait is falling for the first time while it's on its way to the bottom it's swimming down and those fish latch out lash out and eat it so that profile works extremely well now obviously the same gear is not going to work for all these we'll get to that in a second the last jig how could we do a jig buyer's guide and not talk about a swim jig if I were only going to have one, that's all I'm going to tell you, just one. It's a California swim jig, which is that same giant hook as a no jack flipping jig. It's a giant hook. The reason why I go with that one is because you can throw it in anything. You can throw it over grass. You can throw it in brush. You can throw it right up on the shore in the springtime when it's flooded and that water's coming up, that muddy water. Throw it right up in the junk on the bank. If you hook a big pre-spawn fish, there's no fear of them bending out. You can night fish with it. There's so many things you can do with that one giant hook and you know you'll always be good. Now obviously you need lighter line, to, or excuse me, heavier line to set that hook because it is so strong. But this is a California swim jig, half ounce. If I was only going to have one, half ounce. This is the crappie color. I paired that up with a River to Sea D Walker. You guys have seen this over and over this year, how aggressive that bait is underwater. It really has a ton of movement. Where to compare it to something, a Kitek has that big wide tail kick, but not a lot of head movement. This bait has this aggressive tail kick, but the head is up there rocking. It's going up and down and side to side. It's craziest action I've ever seen. When you put that on the back of a swim jig, it gets the swim jig moving and the skirt 
starts to pulse on its own. So when you're swim jigging, you don't have to shake it while you're reeling to get that skirt to do something. You pair it up with the right trailer. That's the D Walker in the 120 size. When those are paired up together, that thing will sit back there and just pulse on its own. It looks incredible. And you just cast and reel. Treat it like a spinner bait or easy fish in a crankbait. It's mindless and they just come up and sock that thing. So again, if I was only going to have one, half ounce California swim jig paired with a D Walker and you're done. It's really that simple. All right, let's talk about gear. On the finesse end, I'm going to give you my three favorite rods. I only brought two of them, but I'll give you my three favorite and then I'll give you an all around budget rod down in the video description. This is a G Loomis GLX, the MBR. So the Mag Bass series, you can tell because it's a full handle instead of a split grip. I've been praising this rod since we started traveling last spring when we went cross country on our road trip. I fell in love with the MBRs. Both the 843 and the 844 are incredible rods. They are do everything rods. You can throw a jig, you could throw a spinnerbait, you could throw a topwater, you could throw a Senko, you could throw a chatterbait, all on the same rod. Uh, it's unbelievable what you can do with them. So if I was only going to choose one to carry me from right now in the winter, throwing a finesse football or throwing a hula grub into the spring where I start throwing a true finesse jig all the way up to that lighter pitching jig, that 844 MBR is unbelievable. It has a ton of backbone, but then it has a really, really soft tip section. I mean, really soft. That combination lets you drag that bait and you can really feel what's going on, but you've got a powerful hook set if you need it because you'll get to the backbone. But if you're throwing a finesse jig, you don't hit them quite as hard and just that softer tip section loads up. So it works great for both. I pair it personally with a Cronark with 40 pound braid and then I throw a leader on there. Leader on my finesse jigs, I use Maxima Ultra Green. It's monofilament. It's simple, it's cheap, it's basic monofilament, but I use it in 10 or 12 pound on those finesse jigs in the middle of winter. That ties easy to the 40. We've done videos on how to tie it, but you run a six to 10 foot leader on there and it's bomb proof. If you need to switch to a heavier jig, you step up, you go to a 15 pound and you're set. Now, the next combo, this has become my all around jig rod this year. This is a Mega Bass rod. It's the Orochi Double X. It's the Brailleist. That's the part that matters, the Brailleist. It's a little bit longer rod. It's seven five, I believe, right? Yeah, it's seven foot five, but it's got that natural taper. So a little bit stouter tip than the other rod, but overall soft throughout the rod. It has a little bit slower taper. So when you drive the hook on, you could throw down to a finesse jig in the larger sizes, but where this really is going to shine is that pitch and jig. When you really drive that hook on that pitch and jig, you'll bury that whole rod. That whole rod will fold up and load up on those fish. On little fish, you don't notice. But when you get a giant fish hooked up and they come up to shake, so many people lose jig fish when those bass come up to jump. It's because they use the wrong rod. This Brailleist is that perfect match where it fully loads, those fish come up to thrash, and it's really hard for them to unload the rod because it's loaded so deep into the blank that as they thrash, the rod will load and unload, but it's loaded so deep, it never fully unloads. So there's always pressure on them, even while they're shaking, it's really hard for them to get the jig out. I've used this style of rod for several decades to throw a jig, and I'm constantly on the search for a better rod, for a more sensitive rod, for a rod that's got that perfect balance. I'm extremely happy with this one because I've got that taper that I've always loved, more sensitivity than I'm used to, and some of the rods I used before, and it's been super reliable. I paired it up with a Corrado K and I'm fishing it with 65 pound braid. This is Max Quattro. So Power Pro Max Quattro, it's thinner. So even though it's 65, it feels like 50 pound braid, a normal 50. 
So I'm able to tie it to all sorts of things. I can tie it to 15, to 17, to 20 pound mono, or I can also, the other one, you guys know that FC100, stretchy fluorocarbon. So if you're fishing clearer water and prefer that fluorocarbon, FC100 in either 16 or 20 pound, both tie extremely well. The last rod, whew, the last one, I didn't even bring it out with me, but because we're talking about that heavy flipping, punching, the baddest punching rod I have ever owned, most of you already know this, is that X-Pride. It's a Shimano X-Pride 711 Extra Heavy. Seven foot, 11 inches. It's a long rod, extra heavy. It's an ultra strong rod, but it's ultra sensitive. That's really hard to find. So it's stiff. So when I'm in heavy cover, I'm flipping and I'm punching and a giant eats and I need to set that giant hook, no problem. It sets with ease, but it's light enough that I can flip all day. My arm doesn't get tired because when you're flipping, you hold your rod up high all day long and a heavy flipping stick will wear you out. You guys have heard me preach about that X Pride before. That 7-Eleven is always sold out, but right now in the middle of winter, of course it's not sold out. They're totally in stock. So if you're planning ahead for the rest of the year, you can get them right now. With that, I think we'll wrap it up. That sounded like a lot, but not if you play it by season. You're talking about two options in the winter. Wrong two. Two options in the winter spring that finesse going towards late spring as those bigger fish are moving up we're switching to that pitching you keep the pitching all the way through summer but of course you can add in that heavy flipping jig and a swim jig will work anytime it's that simple two different leader materials three trailers three trailers to go through the whole year and a couple of rods and you're done and remember, if you really want to drum it down, a good jig rod and a pitching jig will carry you through everything. It's really that easy. Guys, I hope this video helped you. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. If you have questions, leave them down in the comments. And then again, in that video description, we'll link you not only the baits, but color recommendations as well to really make it easy. I hope this helped. We'll talk to you soon.